Hey YouTube, this is Everything Epan here, and today we're going to be doing a video tutorial on how to install Windows Memphis build 1351 in VirtualBox. Now, uh, just a little bit of a uh, comment here. You guys may have noticed in my uh, past tutorials, I changed the links in the description for about 90% of my links, 90 or 95% of my links are now direct links to WinWorld PC. Yes, I finally decided I'm going to get rid of my own links. I'm going to do the direct links to WinWorld PC when I can. And that means there is no more password for those files. Yes, that makes probably a lot of people excited. And, uh, you know, I th it was a lot of thought. I'm like, you know, I wasn't too sure if I was going to do that or not because, you know, uh, there's you know I mean a lot of this is uh, betas and abandonware so I mean there should be no problem with me doing direct links and not having passwords anymore so um, probably the only cases that I'll have passwords on my uh, files would probably be with uh, like beta builds of Windows 7 or Windows 8 or um, maybe virtual hard drives of some of those operating systems that I have um, that I put in the description or something like that but other than that, about 90% of my links in the description will be direct links to WinWorld PC downloads. So that is exciting. Um, so, and I think I might put product keys directly in the description now. I'm not sure what I'm going to do about that, but uh, yes, I got rid of the password for a majority of my files. So, um, beyond saying that, let's go ahead and get into this tutorial of installing Windows Memphis build. 1351 so we're going to type that in as the name of the virtual machine here and uh, make sure your version is selected as windows 98 click next and then we're going to leave this at the recommended size of 64 megabytes of memory click next and then uh, we're going to do two gigabytes of hard drive space we'll just leave it at the recommended and now we're going to go ahead and hit settings storage and then we're going to need to install ms dos um, before this in order for it to work but while you're in the settings, you need to go to System, go to Acceleration, and you need to disable this hardware virtualization right here um, in order for this to work. And then click OK, and then go ahead and start the machine and start the installation of MS-DOS. So I'm going to go through the first part of that, and uh, I'll be back when I hit the uh, date screen to show you the BIOS date. All right, so now we're at the uh, date and time screen here, and now we need to go ahead and uh, we're going to change the date here. And make sure to change this to December 13th of the year, whoops, December 13th, of the year 1996. Just put 96, so it should say 12, 13, 96 with backslashes in between. So click enter to continue on this, and then just keep going with the MS-DOS installation. So I'll be back when this is finished. Okay, so MS-DOS has been installed, and FYI, you will need to install the CD-ROM driver in which I have just done so. And um, when this is here, just make sure that the date is still set to 12-13-1996, uh, and you should be good to go. So now you can go to your D drive, uh, of course, after I uh, put in the ISO file, which uh, is now uh, not specifically called Windows Memphis Build, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be USA Win351, yeah, because it's a direct download from uh, WinWorld PC. So... Go ahead and go to your D drive and then go ahead and type in dir and then it should say this. So now you need to type in CD Win9X. Click enter and it's going to go to the Win9X directory. Then uh, if you type in dir, there should be a ton of files that load up. That means that's good. Go ahead and type in setup and now it'll come up with the uh, routine check. You should be getting up to this Memphis setup screen. So they did change it just a little bit and uh, now you can click on it continue. It's going to prepare the Microsoft Memphis setup wizard. Um, so now it'll come up with the license agreement. There is no product key required for this build, of course. So just go ahead and accept the license agreement and make sure it's still at the C directory. And now it's going to check for install components. And it's going to, as well, check for available disk space. And then now it's going to ask, you know, typical... Uh, portable compact or custom options so just do typical and click next and then you can type in any name you want here I'm just going to do Windows user click uh, next and install the most common components go ahead and click next once you select that 
and now it's going to ask to create a startup disk, but you do not have to do this. Um, it's going to go to about 20%, and then it'll say uh, to insert the startup disk. But go ahead and just cancel this, and then it will uh, pop up with please remove the disk. Just click OK on this, and now it's going to uh, start copying files. So just click Next, and it's going to copy the installation files over and install Microsoft Memphis. So just let this process go through. It should, be, should take a couple minutes to complete maybe five minutes at the most, I don't know how long on average. Uh, it should just take a couple minutes to complete. So just let this process go for just a little bit and I'll be back with you guys once we uh, restart. Okay, so now when it's complete, it will say setup is now ready to restart your computer. Please remove all disk from floppy drives and click OK to restart. So let's go ahead and click OK to go ahead and restart. It's going to restart your machine. It will say, of course, uh, Windows 95, but of course, uh, not everything was changed in Memphis at the time. And it will say getting ready to run Memphis for the first time. And uh, if you were to not disable that hardware acceleration, it would have came up with the uh, error up on the top. And then when you went to uh, shut off your machine and disable it, it would have said that the uh, really or that the uh, it was expired because the date would have been reset since you shut it off and turned it on. So now it'll say Windows 95, and it should say Memphis, but they, of course, did not change every little detail at the time this was uh, created. So it'll say Windows 95 is now setting up plug-and-play devices. But in the bottom right, uh, you see that it says Microsoft Memphis uh, there. And if this comes up, just go ahead and click any key to continue. That is perfectly normal. And uh, you can go ahead and just reset, and it should work uh, just fine. So... Um, yeah, I know it does say Windows 95, and it does come up with the Windows 95 boot screen. And uh, now it's going to do the uh, it's going to do a scan disk because I uh, hard reset it. And uh, if this uh, bypass comes up, just go ahead and click Y and click Enter to bypass it. And uh, you're going to want to do that until it pops up with the uh, setup screen again. So kind of just a little bug that this has, of course. But uh, yeah, so it's going to do the exact same thing. It's going to do the uh, setting up of hardware now it's going to determine the devices on your computer so that's kind of just a uh, glitch kind of thing you have to go through there so I'll just let this sit here for a little bit and I'll be back when it's finished okay so during the setup it's gonna come up with the uh, time zone date and time properties so make sure that the date is still set at December 13th 1996 and you should be good to go so go ahead and click close on this and it's going to finish doing the rest of these with the uh, control panel programs on start menu, Windows help, MS-DOS program settings, and then uh, setup printer, you can uh, eventually when you get there, it will uh, skip. We can uh, skip that step. So uh, this part, of course, should not take too long. It's just uh, doing a couple uh, final things uh, in this installation process. So uh, if this goes quick enough, I'll stay with you guys. But if not, I will pause. And if, of course, a uh, exception error comes up, just click uh, any key to continue. It's just another bug that they have. Uh, now in the printer wizard comes up, just click cancel. And now it says setup has confi finished configuring your system and you must restart your computer before the settings take effect. So click OK to restart and it's now going to shut down and it will eventually now come up with the Microsoft Memphis developer release logo instead of the uh, Windows 95 logo. So it will now uh, boot up into the operating system here and uh, you should be able to log in perfectly fine and everything so in the bottom right of course you see that it says Microsoft Memphis 4.10.1351 uh, indicating that it is build 1351 so that means it is uh, been we have installed the right version and now it's just finalizing some more settings and uh, we are now going to be able to log in now uh, this does not have audio of course just because uh, we installed it ba uh, the base wise but I think if you were to install Windows 95 and it worked now I guess it does say that there is audio right here but I'm not sure if it works yeah uh, it doesn't seem like it's working but that just uh, that could be a glitch or something I'm not really too sure if that's uh, the case but uh, maybe if you go and change settings and of course but on the uh, left there they didn't change it that uh, Windows 95 logo on the left or not logo but a uh, text on the left to uh, Memphis so um, maybe if you yeah of course there is no sounds 
they do have the Microsoft sound still for these startups, so I believe if you play that, that should work. So they did not include the sounds for this build of Memphis, but it would have the Windows 95 uh, sounds still uh, as the startup shutdown sounds. So there you go, guys. That is how to install Microsoft uh, Windows Memphis build 1351 in VirtualBox. Thank you guys for watching. Um, and I hope uh, I should get a lot more positive feedback now that there is no more passwords for about like 90% of my links. So that is exciting. So leave a like on the video if you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Comment your ideas down below and don't forget to subscribe. Once again, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.